So we're going to continue talking about variables. You have already worked with the system variables, mouse x and mouse y. And as a reminder, what is a variable? A variable is something that stands in place for a number that's going to vary or change over time. Right? So mouse x and mouse y is a number that changes based upon the location of my mouse on the x-axis and the y-axis. So this number is changing all the time. System variable means that it's something that's built into processing and all I need to do is to use it and processing knows what to do with it. So I put mouse x here and processing knows that it should pull the coordinates from my cursor, from my mouse. So now we're going to talk about user-defined variables. And this basically just means that you're going to be creating that whole variable. So you create the variable that is a placeholder for a numeric value, right? So here's my variable and it equals this number. In processing there are two types of variables, integers and floats. Integer that we actually write is just INT, you don't spell out all of integer and it's not capitalized, is the variable type that you would use if you want your variable to equal a whole number. So I have int x equals 60, y equals 20, int x. So this is my variable type, this is what I'm calling my variable, and this is the value it's equaling. If you wanted your variable to equal a number that is a fraction, a decimal here, you would have the variable type float. You would declare it as a variable type float. All right, so there are two types of variables, integers or floats. In the processing environment, you call your variables up at the top of your sketch. So here's my void setup and my void draw. So our very first step is we do what's called initialize the variable. And that's telling processing what type of variables is going to be an int. So meaning it's going to equal a number that is a whole number. And what am I calling it? So remember this is user defined. I'm calling it x. Now you can call this variable anything you want. Bob's hot dog stand, red haired lady, anything you want. You want to make sure that you're comfortable typing it over and over again because you will be using the name of this variable in your code multiple times. Most of the time though, we come up with really boring names, names that are descriptive. So a name that would represent the coordinate that we're going to be substituting. So take a guess what we're going to be doing with this variable. In this rectangle, which one of these numbers is going to be switched out or substituted for our variable x. Alright, so you can call it anything. So this is step one. I initialize the variable. Step two is I declare the variable x equals 50. So this was my step one and this is step two. Putting them at the top here above everything else makes them global variables. What does that mean? That means that any code that's inside this code block or inside this code block can access it. If I put this variable only inside my setup, then only code that's inside my setup can access it. And the same thing is if I put this inside my draw, then only code that's inside my draw can access it. If I put it above, then both of these guys could access this variable information. The third step probably the most important step and the step I see people forgetting all the time is once you have initialized and declared your variable you use your variable and as I said gave you a little bit of a heads up which coordinate do you think is going to get replaced here for a variable it's going to be the one that was X alright so I took out 50 and instead of 50 I'm putting a variable X if I play this code it's going to look exactly the same as it did here. Because the way processing reads it is it starts at the top and it's like, okay, cool, you're going to use a variable called x and this x is going to equal 50. All right, fine. And then it moves on like, oh, you want your size to be 500? Okay, great. Okay, here I am in the draw. You want a rectangle? Cool. 
oh, here's x. What is x? x is 50. Okay, so I'm going to put this at 50. All right, so that's why it looks exactly the same. Now, there is a shorter right way to write steps 1 and 2, and this is the way that we do it 90% of the time. And we're combining that initialize and declare. So instead of putting this as two separate lines, you can actually just do it as one. Int x equals 50. So here I'm saying the type of variable. In other words, it can be a whole number. It's an integer. The name of my variable and what I want it to equal. Okay. Why 50? Well, I've already kind of said this, but let's say, let's just think about this a little bit more. This number here that you have your variable equal is going to control where your shape is when it first opens up. So for example, if I wanted my shape to first be right in the middle here when it opens up, and I'm just talking about the x-axis right now, then I would need x to equal 250. If I wanted my shape to be all the way to the left when it opened up, I want x to be 0. If I want my shape to be all the way to the right, then I need x to equal 450. Where did I come up with 450? Well, my square is 50 pixels. If I put it at 500, it'd be off the screen. At this point, I want you to copy this code. And let's put it in a processing sketch. And play it. There it is at 50. And I just want you to see what I mean. So change x's value. Put it at 300, for example, and see how it moves the location, the starting spot. So just do that for a second, play with it a few times, and put in different values here, and then you can move on. So here's the question. So far, everything looks exactly the same, so why are we using the variable? Well, we're going to use it to make things move. This is our step four. We've taken this variable, remember the variable starts out at 50, so it goes in here at 50, and then we're going to add to it. So when I say x equals x plus 1, that is the same as saying 50 equals 50 plus 1, which I'm sure you guys know is 51. So now x equals 51, and it repeats in the draw, and so now it puts 51 in here. Okay, so x equals 51. It comes down here, 51 equals 51 plus 1 x is now equaling 52. So it takes this value 52 and it plops that in. All right, so this only runs one time in the code. This is what it starts out with initially. Once we get into the draw, if we keep adding to it, it holds on to that new value. So in other words, it varies. And every time it loops through, you can keep adding to it. All right, so let's go back to our processing sketch and add this in. And now let's play it. And there it goes slowly across the screen. I'd like you to take a second and see what happens if you change this value. All right, so try putting in 10, try putting in 20, try putting in 3. So take a second and make a note of what happens when you change this value. All right, so our summary here is Step one and step two can be combined. That's initializing and declaring your shape. We can write it like this. The value that we set here, that we want our variable to equal, has to do with where you want your shape to be when it first opens up. Step three, super important step, don't forget, is you use the variable in your shape. Step four is you increase or decrease the variable in the draw. And we do want it to happen after the shape, right? So we have the shape first, and then we increase it. Or, as we'll see in some examples, we may decrease it. All right, let's do the same thing, but on the y-axis now. So now we want to see how can we have our shape up here and move down the y-axis. So first, and this is the way I'd always recommend tackling these things, just plot out your shape. All right, I'm just going to copy this. I'd like you to do the same. So let's play. And here's our shape up here. Second, I have to figure out which coordinate needs to 
vary over time. Which one needs to move to have its number change? So that way, that's the one I'll know should become a variable. Well, if I wanted to move down the y-axis, it has to be this 0, because that's my y, right? This is my x, this is my y, this is my width, this is my height. All right, so up at the top, I'm going to initialize int y, I'm going to call it y, but you can call it Bob's hot dog stand, equals 0. So that's step 1 and step 2. Step 3, I'm going to replace 0 here with y. And at this point, I could just test it and make sure it should look exactly the same. Yep, it does. Step 4, I'm going to increase the value of y. y equals itself plus 5. I just picked a number. You can pick a different number. And here it goes down the screen. Okay, so now I'd like you to practice using the same logic, but you're going to be subtracting. There are three practices I want you to do, one right after another, before you show me. Practice one is I want you to have a circle that starts at the bottom of the screen and it moves up. So it's doing the exact opposite of what we just did. Then, just as a little bit of review, as an excuse to bring in random, this has nothing to do with variables, take that same shape and have it wiggle a little bit to the left and the right on the x-axis as it moves up. So you're not going to be adding any variables, you're going to be doing this just like you did it in the 20th Century Project. And if you don't remember how you did it, then open up one of those and review. Okay, so that will be practice one. Once you have that one, Move on to practice two. Plot a circle out on the right hand side of the screen and have it move from the right to the left. Then add the random. Again, this has nothing to do with variables, this is just review. So that when it moves from the right to the left, it wiggles a little bit up and down. Then practice three. Make a circle, move diagonally. It starts up here and I want it to go down to the lower edge. So as a hint, you're only going to use one variable, but you're just going to use that variable twice. When you're done with those three practices, show me what you came up with.